The Ethereum 2.0 upgrade has been delayed yet again, presenting significant concerns for Ethereum holders and everyone who's built upon the platform. Meanwhile, the competitors to Ethereum are hot on its heels and are using this opportunity to their advantage. Concurrently, the graphic card space could be under significant pressure with respect to the mining of Ethereum. What does this mean for you and us in the crypto space? Stick around to explore. G'day crypto goers, I'm Adam Stokes. Welcome back to the channel where as always a free and easy way of supporting this work is by simply hitting that like button, subscribing if you're new, ensuring you also knock that notification bell so you never miss a new episode. Also watch out for the bots in the comments below. I will never ask you to contact me via Telegram or WhatsApp. They are scammers. Stay away. Okie dokie, let's get into this mess that is Ethereum. As we can see, the rollout of Ethereum 2.0 has been delayed yet again. If we go back in the Ethereum timeline, we can see that they've been promising to upgrade from proof of work to proof of stake for years. And these delays are getting a little bit silly. If you're a holder of Ethereum, which for all out there, I am a holder of Ethereum and I didn't originally invest in the ICO many years ago when it first rolled out. I didn't entirely understand it. Now I've got a deep understanding of this coin and see it has massive potential as the market also backs me up here with the huge market share it has. But the concept of Ethereum has huge competitors to it as the rollout from Ethereum's proof of work to proof of stake is just continually being delayed. It has been delayed so many times that no matter if you love or hate this coin, you're starting to lose trust in the foundation. They tell us that they're going to meet a deadline and they don't. And then they delay it again and make a new deadline. And then they delay that again and again and again. Meanwhile, the competitors to Ethereum, which we'll talk about a bit later, are getting more and more market share, whilst the Ethereum miners are laughing all the way to the moon, making unforeseeable profits off the gas fees that are destroying everyone on this network. This, in my opinion, is a tipping point for Ethereum. As mentioned, there are countless competitors to this coin. The number one argument I hear for those who support Ethereum and say it cannot be beaten revolves around that of network effect. That is, Ethereum has the biggest market share and a huge network effect with so many companies, individuals, corporations and investors building upon this network and investing into it. But here's the thing, network effect is not everything. Don't believe me? Ask how Yahoo is going with their network effect. Ask how AOL is going with their network effect. Kodak, Blockbuster, Pan Am, take your pick. It doesn't matter. Things are moving too quickly in the crypto timeline for a corporation, a foundation, a company, a concept as big as Ethereum to be stuffing around like this. We have been waiting for this upgrade for years. Now, again, I hold Ethereum and I hope it does succeed, but I've hedged my bets. If you've been with my channel for some time, you know that I've often said, I do not know who will win the smart contract coin race. I don't know. But I do know that there are some very valid competitors to Ethereum. And I also know that just because you're in here first doesn't mean you're going to win. Beyond this, I know that people are getting frustrated and pulling away from Ethereum because we have alternatives. Just as now people are pulling away from the banks because we have alternatives to the banks, the same is true with Ethereum. Now here's the thing, if you've gone all in on Ethereum, you should be very nervous, very nervous indeed. But if you've invested in other coins, such as Algorand, Solana, Pulse, Cardano, take your pick, you should be very happy. What Ethereum has given its competitors is time. And within the crypto timeline, things are moving so quickly. The advancements that the other coins have already made, it's almost like they're just giving away their lead. There is, in my opinion, although I'm not a developer, there is no excuse for these delays. We're talking about years upon years, which in human time is decades upon decades. There is just no time for this coin to be stuffing around like this. Furthermore, with the amount of money this foundation has and the number of developers they have working on this coin, I genuinely cannot see any excuse for this, particularly as its competitors are delivering. If no other competitor was delivering, fair enough. It's like, well, this is all we can do. This is the technology we've got. 
but the competitors are delivering. And those who are building upon Ethereum, they're looking elsewhere. And the users, even if you're not a dev or you're not using Ethereum to build your own product, your own company, as a user, you've had enough of this because you're sick to death of the gas fees. Ethereum is retarding so many projects that could be doing so much better because the gas fees are out of control. So as a result, the market naturally has to migrate to where there are lower gas fees and these products, they exist. Ultimately, if Ethereum doesn't pull its finger out, it's going to end up right next to AOL, Netscape, Blockbuster, Kodak and Yahoo. The market will not wait. It does not matter who was first, how much of a market share it has today, what the market cap is, the market doesn't care. The free market needs a product that works, and when the technology is available, it will use the company that provides it. But before looking at some of the competitors, let's read this article from the good people at Cointelegraph. It reads, The rollout of Ethereum 2.0, or ETH2, includes a transition from proof of work to proof of stake that will supposedly transform Ether, or ETH, into a deflationary asset and revolutionize the entire network. I'll pause there and I'll actually mention this. The other thing to consider is, I've spoken about devs, I've spoken about those who are building upon Ethereum and those who are using Ethereum. But let's face it, many of you are merely speculators and investors, and I'm not taking away from your right to leverage upon these concepts to make money. This is what the majority of the market is about. But the truth is, if you're looking at making a 10x or a 100x on Ethereum, those days are kind of gone. Yet when you look at the competitors to Ethereum, love or hate Ethereum, or love or hate the technology behind this, if you are purely here as an investor or speculator, you're kind of now forced to look at its competitors because this is becoming a very high risk, low return coin. In the past, I was viewing this coin as a low risk, low return coin. It's kind of a blue chip share in the crypto space. But if it's now a low return coin at a higher risk, what's the point? What's the point of putting your money into a coin risking so much for potentially so little return? Now, again, I don't know if Ethereum will fail, but the reality is that the merge is continually being delayed and the competitors are not waiting for this coin. They will move ahead and the market will go to where it's treated best. Reading on, the event has been a trending topic for years and while anticipation for the merge has been building over the past couple of months, this week Ethereum core developer Tim Biko or Biko informed the world that it won't be June, but likely in the few months after. No firm date yet. So we were expecting this apparently in June, and now they're saying it's going to be another few months later. But then he's also saying there's no firm date yet. Well, guess what? We've heard this before. We keep hearing the same thing over and over again. And whoever you are, wherever you sit in all of this space, you've probably had enough, and rightfully so. Reading on. Delays in the Ethereum network upgrades are nothing new, and so far, the immediate effect on Ether's price following the revelation has been minimal. And if we just have a quick look at the Ethereum charts, we can in fact see that is true, that over the last week, the news was around here and it's dropped down from around 3,146 US dollars to the, around the $3,000 mark. And for crypto, that is not a big movement. So overall, that isn't a huge impact on the price. But remember, we in the crypto land, many people, many commentators from many different angles were saying Ethereum should be at the $10,000 mark. And in many ways, I supported that claim because for what Ethereum was delivering and for its competitors at the time, about a year ago, we were saying, yes, there is no reason why Ethereum shouldn't be at 10 grand, yet it's still floating around the $3,000 mark. And compared to the supply, I think that's a reasonable price for what it's doing at the moment. So to say that the price hasn't really been affected, well, yes and no. The price hasn't dumped suddenly with another delayed launch of Ethereum 2.0. However, the price isn't performing as well as what we thought it would be and where it should be. And this is also taking in consideration the rest of the market. You might say, well, the rest of the market isn't performing so well. Look, Bitcoin and Ethereum are kind of outliers in the markets. And although Bitcoin itself has pulled back, it's still way up compared to where it was many years ago. Arguably, the same is true for Ethereum. But the point is, we're now at a stage that those who have gone all in on Ethereum are getting very nervous, while the competitors to 
Ethereum are understandably getting very excited. And speaking of those competitors, let's just head over to Coindesk to discuss some of them. They say that four of the top Ethereum killers today are Solana, Cardano, Tezos, and Polkadot. Now, Tezos is probably one I'd be questioning a little bit, but they've been around for a while and they have got some good technology behind them. But most certainly I would say Solana and Cardano, absolutely. Polkadot, yes. If you've been looking at the Pulse launch, that in my mind is one of the biggest competitors that has been coming up. And if you've looked at my deep dive into Pulse, I have said the biggest threat to the entire Pulse chain launch was in fact Ethereum 2.0. Now, to be completely transparent, I did sacrifice for Pulse. And I don't know if Pulse is going to work, just as I don't know if Ethereum, Solana, Cardano, Polkadot, Avalanche, Algorand, and many others. I don't know who's going to win this in this space or if they'll coexist. But what I do know is that whoever takes this position to be number one or number two, they're going to provide unforeseeable returns to those who have invested in it. So personally, I am kind of happy with whatever happens here. That is, I've hedged all my bets. I've made my move on all of these coins. I even have some Tezos, but I bought that years ago. I'm not very confident in that coin at all. But I do have a lot of Cardano and Solana and Polkadot. And I also have Sacrifice for Pulse, as I mentioned. I'm also very excited about Algorand and Avalanche and even some other ones such as Elrond Gold to an extent. But my top picks are probably Solana, Cardano, Ethereum and Pulse. That's not to say that they will all succeed or only one will succeed, but I do feel that by hedging my bets as an investor in all of those, I only need one of them to come up better than four to one, which I think is a very conservative estimate. And I'm sitting pretty. Combined with staking rewards, it's kind of difficult to lose in this space. Nonetheless, it is crypto and anything can happen. Therefore, only ever invest what you can afford to lose and know that all investments come with risk. Now, something else to consider that I thought was interesting is that the delayed Ethereum merge could impact the graphics card market. The key takeaway from this article at tomshardware.com says the delayed transition means that GPU miners now have a few more extra months, perhaps even years, to eke out games from their mining cards. Some miners may have already started offloading their mining equipment into secondary market platforms such as eBay in an attempt to preempt the merge. For those who still haven't, they have now been given an extended grace period through which they can still take profits from their GPUs. Okay, so I started my crypto journey as a miner. I use ASIC miners primarily to mine on the SHA-256 algorithm, but many of the Ethereum miners are using GPUs to get those sick returns. All of those gas fees that are killing you, they are going to the miners. Now to the gamers out there, and there is an overlap most certainly I find in the crypto space between gamers and crypto goers, gamers are a little bit and understandably annoyed with the miners, not just because of all the profits they're making in the transaction fees, but because if you want to buy a GPU for your computer, they cost a fortune. They cost so much because there is a huge demand on these cards because there are two markets they are trying to satisfy. They are trying to satisfy the gamers and everyday computer users who need a lot of computing power and the miners. The advantage of GPU mining is that unlike ASIC mining, you can on-sell GPUs when you finish them. When I've finished with an ASIC miner, there's nothing I can do with it. It is essentially just a big metal box that has reached its end of life, and it for all intents and purposes becomes a $10,000 paperweight or expensive piece to put in a museum for future generations to probably laugh at. However, ASIC miners do what they're designed to do. They mine on said algorithm. It might be the SHA-256 algorithm, the script algorithm, or others. But they are powerful machines that do what they are intended to do. At the end of their life, there's nothing really you can do with them. GPUs, on the other hand, you can do something with them. They are parts of a computer that can be used elsewhere. So now we can see, and wouldn't you be spewing, if you were an Ethereum miner, and you were getting ready for this migration from proof of work to proof of stake, you may have likely preempted this move, sold your graphic cards at a time that there was a huge demand on them, therefore getting a good price, but giving up your ability to mine. And now this news has come out and said, oh no, you know that thing that we said? <laughs> we're not doing that anymore. Well, as a miner, you would understandably be spewing because you've sold this card before extracting every bit of value out of it. Concurrently, the entire computer industry as a gamer or someone who needs this computing power, just when you thought there was going to be some respite in the prices of graphics cards? Well, not anymore. 
these RTX, RX and XT cards would still be in massively high demand and therefore demanding a very high price. But anyway, those are just my two guay for the day. What are your thoughts on this? Is this the beginning of the end for Ethereum? Is it just another little bump in their road to success? Or are you indifferent and just hedging your bets amongst other coins? And if so, what are those other coins? Which coin do you believe will win the smart contract coin race? Remember, if you want to do anything crypto safely, including buying Ethereum or any of its competitors, head over to thecrypto.land, that's www.thecrypto.land, where you can buy crypto, lend crypto, stake crypto, learn more about crypto, earn free crypto, get yourself a hardware wallet, or do your crypto taxes and a whole lot more. It's all here on thecrypto.land, one safe and simple site built for you, my crypto brothers and sisters. I'm Adam Stokes. Thanks for listening. Happy investing. What are you doing, Ethereum? And I'll talk to you next time.